Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 10b. This is the second of two in a series of tutorials focused on accounting for defined benefit pension plans. This tutorial focuses on accounting for pensions using ASPE. This tutorial has five key learning objectives. The first is to review accounting for defined benefit pension plans under ASPE. Next, to review how to construct a defined benefit pension worksheet or I'll show you an alternative as I did in tutorial 10a. Third, to prepare journal entries to account for defined benefit plans under ASPE. Fourth, to prepare a partial balance sheet reflecting the defined benefit pension plan account balances. And fifth, to determine the funded status of a defined benefit pension plan. This tutorial is still based on the Serenity Limited set of data. The information is exactly the same as in tutorial 10a, except now that we will be performing the requirements under ASPE. The first requirement to calculate the pension expense. Even though the requirement is asking only to determine the pension expense, what I've done here is presented the entire pension worksheet to act as a bit of review from tutorial 10a. We have the DBO that we calculated based on the beginning balance of 900000 We added the service costs. We added the interest on the DBO that's based on the opening balance. We took out the benefits paid, and then we plugged or determined the remeasurement gain or loss. In this case, it was a remeasurement gain. We then proceeded to work through the plan assets. We have an opening balance of 660000 We add the expected return. We add the contributions, we take out the benefits, and in this particular case, there was a remeasurement loss because the actual return was lower than the expected return. We had a net defined benefit account that started at 240,000. We paid out 216,000 in cash for contributions. The main thing we're concerned about here, and you notice that everything is exactly the same as in tutorial 10A under IFRS, with the exception of the red shaded area now that deals with the expense. What's the same is the current service costs, 120,000, the interest on the DBO, 63,000, the expected interest on the plan assets is 46,200. Those three things are the same. However, what's different is if you recall in tutorial 10A, these were included in OCI, but now they're not. Now they're included in the pension expense. The pension expense then is basically the sum of the three items we had before, plus the remeasurement gain uh, or loss, in this case, remeasurement loss on the plan assets and the remeasurement gain on the DBO. In this case, our pension expense is $118,400. Now, you could have done something slightly different here instead of including the expected return for the plan assets is actually including only the actual return and then not worrying about any remeasurement gain or loss because the remeasurement gain or loss is not recognized separately as part of OCI. So there's no point in separating the expected from the remeasurement gain or loss. So we could have just put the entire actual interest earned on the plan assets and that would eliminate this align here with the remeasurement gain or loss and that would then eliminate this piece here. We would then eliminate uh, this remeasurement loss and we would still have the remeasurement gain on the defined pension obligation. This is still calculated so it's not like we forget about the remeasurement gain or loss in the DBO. It's only the plan asset that we do not need to separate the interest. And again, if you don't want to use the pension worksheet, we have the alternative approach. This is exactly the same as under IFRS, so no need to go through these in great detail. But again, for the DBO, we start with the opening balance. We add the current service costs, add the interest on the beginning balance, take out the benefits, and then adjust any remeasurement gain or loss to arrive at the ending balance. In some cases, you will be told what the remeasurement gain or loss is, so your ending balance is just the result. And if you like your T-accounts, again, this is the same thing as we saw before. A beginning balance on the uh, right plus the service cost plus the interest minus the benefits and then plus or minus any remeasurement gain or loss. In this case, again, it was remeasurement gain giving us the ending balance. If you can get to the point where you understand the concepts well enough to do a T-account approach, you will save yourself so much time. It's unbelievable.
Next, the alternative to the pension worksheet. This part up here is exactly what we had under IFRS. So nothing changed here. The beginning balance, 660 plus the expected return, plus the contributions minus the benefits, and then the difference, the remeasurement gain or loss. However, if you know you're using ASPE and you don't need to account for the actual interest separately from the expected, we can do a modified approach that we did down here. Whereas you notice that I replaced the expected interest with the actual of 21,000 and this no longer exists and we still end up with the same balance. The remeasurement gain or loss is gone here. We end up with the same 882,600 in plan assets. And if you still like your T accounts, the beginning balance, but here now I included the actual interest of 21,000 instead of the expected and then uh, left out a separate uh, adjustment to make up the difference to arrive at the actual. Add the contributions, remove the benefits, and you end up with your ending balance of 882,600. And now we can show the alternative to determining the pension expense without using a pension worksheet. Again, we have the current service costs. We add the interest on the DBO. The original approach took the expected return on the plan assets, right? So the plan expected to make 46,200, so that's a reduction. We subtract the expected interest earned. We had a remeasurement gain on the DBO, so we're going to subtract that from the pension expense of 43,600. And then we had a remeasurement loss on the plan assets, so we're going to add that back, the 25,200. And remember, under IFRS, these things ended up in OCI. So those are included now in pension expense for a total of 118,400. If you, again, did not want to account for the difference between the expected return and the actual return, then you could get away with just including the actual return here of $21,000 and then leaving it at that. Next step is to record the journal entries. To record the journal entries under ASPE, conceptually no different from what we saw under IFRS with uh, one exception though, is that in this case there's no OCI. So we're just going to debit pension expense, 418,400, credit the net defined benefit liability of 118,400, and that's taken care of. Then the second journal entry is simply to record the pension contributions. So we're going to debit the pension liability for 216000 and credit cash. And this was the same as we saw before in tutorial 10A. No difference from IFRS. So that's it for the journal entries and the requirements. What I've done here is even though it wasn't a requirement, I've included a partial balance sheet and funded status once again. And this would be the same as we saw under IFRS. We still have a long-term liability, net defined benefit liability, 142400 and the funded status is still calculated the same way, the difference between the DBO and the plan assets. So now we can wrap up with some points to remember. Again, the DBO, the plan assets, the NDB are all calculated the same way under IFRS and ASPE. Interest expense on the DBO and interest earned on the plan assets should always be based on opening balances. The pension worksheet is helpful, but not necessary unless specified. In addition, again, to reiterate, the pension plan assets and obligation are not on the company's financial statements. They're held by the trustee of the pension plan. The only thing on the financial statements of the company is the balance of the net defined benefit asset or obligation, and it's the same under both ASPE and IFRS. Under ASPE, remeasurement gains or losses on the DBO and plan assets are booked to pension expense, not to OCI. So this is the major difference from tutorial 10A right here. So this concludes tutorial 10b on accounting for uh, defined benefit pensions under ASPE. If you did not review tutorial 10a, then it's recommended that you do so. And there you will see defined benefits under IFRS. We hope you found this useful.